Hey guys, I'm Happy, and this is a different kind of video. I want to go over some of the lineups and strategy that I use on Ascent when playing Yoru. But real quick before we jump into things, I also just want to mention that I'll be using a website called Valoplant for some visuals in this video. Valoplant is a website and application that allows you to plan out strategies and hypothetical plays using a map overview. This video isn't sponsored in any way, I just want to put it out there as a reference. Alright, we're going to be starting with attack setups for Ascent, which I've categorized into two sections. First, I'm going to show you some of the basic gatecrash lineups that I like to use to lurk, as well as the general lurking strategy, and then I'll go into more detail over executes and entry strategy. So for this lineup, we're going to have our team playing over at B site while we lurk on A main to get a pick on anyone, grabbing orb, or maybe trying to flank us. First, we're going to post up by these milk boxes and garbage, and from there we're just going to aim anywhere along this third bench and throw. This gate crash will slide along the wall and land in this corner at the entrance of garage, allowing you to regroup efficiently. This takes about 6 seconds to get from the boxes here to the buy phase barrier, so throw it around 6 seconds on the clock, you should make it there in time for any early peak, and from there you can really make the play yours. Personally, I like to post up on these boxes and just wait for defenders to push, but you can also play mid, you can make noise here to fake a push, you can really do anything with this. Next is just our lineup from B lobby to A. We're going to shove our face in this corner next to the bench by spawn and aim at this sort of electrical box beside the bar sign. This will land right next to the boxes at the entrance to A main and it only takes about 7 seconds to get from here to the by phase barrier at B. Uh, both of these lineups are pretty loose so don't worry too much about the accuracy but they are essential to learn so just try them in a couple of um, practice games and yeah you'll be, you'll be golden. Alright, so those are our rotation lineups. Moving on, I'm going to demonstrate some executes and gate crash lineups for attacking on insight. First, we have a lineup to put our gate crash in hell. We're just going to shove our back into this corner by the radiantite box, and we're going to aim at the top of this hanging lamp. This will coast along the wall here and eventually slide through sight and end in hell. This TP is very strong in a couple of different circumstances. If your controller, for example, decides to smoke heaven, it can create a nice little bit of cover for you when you TP in. This gate crash is also very powerful for faking, as the audio radius, as you can see, it covers all of A site, heaven, and even some parts of garden. Now, let's say that you want to TP on the site, but you don't necessarily have all that support, you don't have that controller willing to smoke for you. Um, you don't have that util on your team to execute. A very nice entry, especially on an econ round, is just to throw your TP pretty much anywhere along the right side of this wall um, in A main, and it's going to land in the corner here behind the box. And if comboed with a simple flash, it can make for a risky but very effective entry. Um, if you're on a full buy versus an econ, I really don't recommend doing this, as it's just a big risk. But if you're desperate for an opening, you're on an eco, you're just going to eco rush A, it's very effective, it often catches defenders off guard, or at the very least it opens a lot of space for your team to get that plant money and get that bike down. We're going to hop over to mid here, I have two cross map gate crash lineups from top mid. Um, the first one is going to land in market. It's fairly precise, so definitely practice this one a few times before hopping in game. We're going to make sure that our back is against this wall to our left. Then we will slowly edge along it just by tapping our A key until the left side of this radiantite crate lines up with the right side of this yellow brick wall in mid. Once we are in this position, we're just going to aim at the top left corner of the, um, or at the top right corner, sorry, of this radiantite box, and just ever so slightly to the left so that it doesn't sort of slide off into this corner here. This will slide down cat, it's going to hop over the railing and go through the arches, eventually landing in market against this crate of nachos. Um, this can be comboed either with a full B execute from your team, or with a relatively easy flash from top mid. It's also a very powerful uh, fake TP position, as it's going to alert anybody in defender spawn, in mid, market, most of B, even a couple parts of garden. This next lineup is from top mid to garden. You're going to need to cross mid to this double tall box. If the enemy has an op or a chamber or something, you may want to ask for your smoker to smoke top mid, or you might just want to flash yourself for the cross to be safe. But once you're in this corner, we're going to aim at the top of this door, right where the two doors sort of meet. Mouse one, and this will ride down cat, 
root tree and land and garden just outside the window to heaven. This is an insane fake TP spot. It's in an area of the map that people don't very often play. It's not a very high traffic area, making it harder for the enemy to decide if it's fake or not. People aren't that likely to walk into it and see sort of like the blue puddle left behind by the TP, um, in which case they could obviously comment it was a fake TP. You're still top mid because he's on cross. Um, this will alert anybody playing in mid, pizza, tiles, A site, A main, A heaven, garden, tree, even some parts of CT. Uh, this lineup can be very strong if thrown during a full A execute as well. As faking your TP in garden while your team executes A will confuse pretty much everybody on that site. It's going to draw a lot of pressure off of that narrow choke and really make a lot of space for your team to enter. Okay, we're moving over to the B site executes now, and I actually have some bad news. Due to the layout of Garage and B site, it's actually very difficult for Yoru to entry here without smokes and support from his team. I'm not going to show you any like crazy mind-boggling lineups here. These are just pretty simple. You throw the gate crash in this spot, and you take it or you don't take it kind of thing. Um, I am, however, going to show you some of the TPs that I like to use to entry for my team and sort of help open B site up and talk a little bit about the pros and cons of them. Most of these lineups are going to assume that the enemy has either smoked off B main or that your team's controller has smoked off market and DT here. Our first TP is for logs. You cannot take this TP unless you are able to flash yourself in. I recommend flashing off this right wall or pop flashing off the ground in the smoke here before TPing. Um, it's important that both lane and the corner of switch here are blinded, otherwise you'll be left praying that your team can trade off you, because somebody sitting in this corner in switch will just gun you down the second you TP. Um, another note for this TP is that unless your team has nated logs, you are actually running the risk of just TPing strand off of somebody sitting in that corner. Overall, this is like a 2 out of 10 TP, I really don't recommend it. Alternatively, I strongly recommend this TP to market stairs. It's pretty loose. If you're smoked off, just go ahead and ping the spot that you want it to land. This TP will allow you to clear all of switch as well as the sort of immediate left of garage. From there, you can swing stairs or market. It, you'll likely get traded, but if you're entering, all you can really ask for is that one for one, right? Overall, this gives your team a tremendous amount of space and it's really quite safe. Next up is the TP to backstairs here. Um, again, we just ping this one to throw it through the smoke. It's very aggressive TP, but it will often catch people off guard because of that. Not a whole lot more to say about this though. You, you know, one thing to keep in mind is that if you're playing against like a Killjoy, there's a very high chance that she'll just be sitting here AFK waiting for her alarm bot. So keep that in mind. Okay, now that we've covered some of those basic entry TPs for B main, we're going to go over a couple of more advanced lineups. Let's talk about mid-con. Typically mid-con and just mid in general on Ascent is a very highly contested area, so any room we can make here will go very far for our team. First, I have a TP lineup for defender spawn from mid link. This is very aggressive and it gets predictable pretty quick, so use it sparingly. First, we're just going to have to cross mid, which shouldn't be too huge of an issue unless you're playing against 10s. From here, we are going to look at this sort of multiplication looking design on the armor, and we're just going to aim slightly to the right of the center. This is quite precise, so give it a couple of practice runs before hopping in game. This is going to go through mid and hit this angled wall in pizza, and end up behind this bench in spawn. Now, a slightly more aggressive variant of this TP is just to aim at the right end of the same design on this armor plating. This gate crash is going to land in pizza. Now, once this is in pizza, it's very easy for us to throw a flashbang that pop flashes pizza, and it's going to allow us to get an easy pick on anybody playing in market or lower mid. Alright, so that was a lot to take in, but we're finally finished with the attack section of the video. So we're moving on to defense now, and I'm going to show you a couple of basic lineups before we move on to the flash section of the video. 
Um, again, I'm going to open up with the rotation lineups just because they are so essential to sort of the gameplay loop of Yoru and just your core gameplay. Just like in the offense section, I'm going to start with A to B for the rotation lineup. First, we're going to put ourselves in this corner up in heaven. And here's the tricky part. From right to left, we're going to see four different colors along this box. Um, they're going to go from gray, brown, beige, to dark beige. And we're just going to aim at the very last one, the dark beige part, right in the middle. This will fly straight through spawn and it's going to land in the back corner of CT here. But let's say that this TP is a little bit too exposed. A very precise variant of this lineup that is going to put us somewhere a little bit safer is just going to come back. We're just going to return to the same spot up here in heaven. And we are going to aim exactly where the beige and the dark beige meet sort of at this, at this line in between the two of them. And this is a curving TP lineup, which without getting too technical just means that it hugs the corners so tightly that it actually curves entirely around the edge. And this is eventually going to make it into this corner in CT and land sort of in this cubby here where you hopefully won't be TPing onto any raised grenades. Um, it takes about 5 seconds to get from the TP lineup spot to the buy barrier, so just keep that in mind when you're doing your setups. And then from B to A, it's really quite elementary. We're just going to sit in the corner here and aim along the right side of ramp. This lands heaven. Takes about five seconds as well to reach the buy barrier from here. Super simple. Okay, cool. Now we can cover some more aggressive lineups for A main. The first one is a good fake TP. We're going to get in this back corner and we're just going to aim at the bottom of this hanging light and we will throw as the buy phase ends. This goes through A main and it lands all the way in gelato here in that corner. If the enemy has been playing aggressively mid then this TP can be a great way to cross over trips undetected like chamber traps, killjoy alarm bots that get set up in A main. Now we have a lineup from the same spot that lands in attacker spawn um, just along the right side of this choke point under the arches here. There are these three large tiles at the bottom. We're going to aim at the dark line between the first and the second tile. This again just goes straight through a lobby and it lands in attacker spawn. I'll often throw these at the beginning of the round just to fake, buy some time. You'd really be surprised how often attackers will um, waste 30 seconds staring at one of these waiting for a free kill. Okay guys, I have one more gate crash before we move on to flashes. Let's say that we are playing cat and mid is either smoked or the enemy is hard executing A. We can pop our head out here, just you know, make sure that mid is clear, we're not going to get one tapped. And we can throw a gate crash right at the junction of these two lines. This is a very speedy TP, and it's going to land in attack or spawn. The real power here is that if the enemy is playing in A lobby and they decide to rotate out, because of where this TP lands, they are not going to hear it and they're not going to see it unless for some reason they decide to clear this corner really wide. Now it is time for my favorite part of the video, flash lineups. We're going to start over at A lobby and we're just going to look at a couple of our options. First off, anywhere in lobby that you can see this beige dormer, you can throw a one-way flash from. This flash is very powerful as it won't blind your team as they peek out of arches. You can also use this flash to cover your own entry. Next, we have a pop flash for people in heaven from lobby. We're going to make sure that we hug this left side wall and that we are aiming at the top of this chimney. It doesn't have to be super precise. We're just going to throw our flash and we're going to swing wide, making sure that we step away from this left wall over to the right side. Due to the angle that you throw the flash, you will not flash yourself, but you will flash the players in heaven. Practice this one a few times. Just get the angle down and you shouldn't be flashing yourself or your teammates with whatever. Um, and just keep in mind that this is only a partial flash on the players in heaven. Uh, 
Alright, now let's say that we are defending and we want to aggro peak main. Once we hear enemies, we can flash against this back wall and swing. Um, this is pretty standard and this usually won't blind you at all. If it does, it will only be partial. Enemies in main will be full blinded. But always be careful for an anti-flash player. Okay, that's cool and all, but what if we want to get very aggressive in A main? We can set up a clone here at the buy barrier, and we can throw the first flash just like we did. And then we can walk down main with our clone, and we can flash into this cubby, allowing us to swing retreating players who probably don't expect to be getting flashed in their base 5 seconds into the round. Um, again, use this sparingly, it's really aggressive, you don't want to be doing this every round, you don't want to do any of this every round. You want to be, you know, proactive, unpredictable. A couple more defensive flashes for a site. The first two are coming from heaven. This is simple. We're just going to look at the bottom of this um, cannon kingdom satellite thing and we're going to throw. This is a one way flash that blinds generator, dice, switch, pretty much everywhere except for hell. Um, this is very powerful for retaking or just delaying a push. Next one is from heaven as well. We're gonna hug the right wall and we're gonna aim at the very tippy top of this building. And we're just gonna strafe left as we peek off of this one. This one will usually partially blind you, but players on site will be blinded for much longer. And if you're lucky, sometimes it won't blind you at all. Okay, now you probably know that you can flash over these double boxes just by looking down and throwing your flash. But what if I told you that there was a better way? A way that you can pop flash these without flashing yourself at all. We're just going to take a step back and we're going to flash off of the railing above to avoid being flashed yourself. This works the same on this box below. Just keep in mind that it doesn't blind all of main, so be careful when you peek wide. Okay, here is my absolute favorite flashbang. Let's say the switch is closed and our TP is in tree. Now, we can bounce a flash through this little tiny hole in the door. Don't believe me? Yeah, it's pretty silly, but trust me, it's rewarding to hit these. Personally, I recommend just practicing it, but since this is a lineup video, I made a quick lineup for this. We're going to position ourselves in the back of bricks and we're going to wait until we hear the door being shot. We're going to line up this notch on the right side of our HUD with the bending wire on the steps. You just make sure that you TP as the flashbang bounces. Now real quick before we hop over to B, I just want to show you one more aggressive execute for A main as defense. We are going to throw our rotation TP in case they go B. And then we are going to set up a clone at the buy barrier and look straight down until the barrier drops. Once it drops, we will start the clone and we're going to book it to wine. The clone should cover the noise that we make as we run over to wine. And now we can peek main either off of audio or off our teammates. We can also pop flash and swing this. It's a very strong econ strategy. It's cheesy. Don't do it every round, but it catches people off guard. You can get a couple of nice multi kills with this as well. All right, hopping over to B site now. We have a super aggressive double flash execute. First, we will flash through the window. Be careful not to swing this instantly. You will flash yourself. Then we will flash behind this box, and we're gonna swing it as it pops. And then, yeah, you can catch people around this corner who. I've just been double flashed, so I don't even know where they are anymore. Um, just make sure that you set up a TP before executing this. Here's a fun flash. We're going to sit in the back corner of Switch, and we can flash main to stop a push or just to aggro peak. We're just going to line our HUD element on the uh, left side here up with the lever like this. And throw. Just keep in mind that this will flash the <laughs> your teammates if they are holding market or CT. And finally, I have two TPs from market to contest mid or to retake site. When playing in market, it's pretty common for attackers to smoke you out by taking mid and taking 
barrage at the same time to kind of pin you, this flash should give you a pretty big advantage on whichever side decides to push first. You can do the same thing for Peking Man. Alright, that's going to wrap it up for the Advanced Yoru Strategy Guide on Ascent. I'm going to do more of these. I think I'm going to approach them in alphabetical order, probably. Um, of course, everybody has their own playstyle. Yoru is an insanely diverse agent, so... Keep messing around with him in customs guys, you know, feel free to give me a follow on any of my social media or even drop me a sub, like, comment. It would take an entire video alone just to describe how much it helps to motivate and elevate content creators, but uh, yeah, take it easy guys, thanks.